Hey, Forge fans, it's the Forge Audio Network. I'm Anthony Urcioli. Big match coming up for Forge FC. They're on the road. They're at Saputo Stadium in Montreal as they take on CF Montreal of Major League Soccer in the quarterfinal of the uh, Canadian Championship. Forge coming off that dominant 4 0 win on the road in Halifax, one of the toughest stadiums to play in. Um, and it was as impressive a win as you'll see at this level. So Forge FC coming into this match against CF Montreal as underdogs, as you'd expect, um, just based on the two leagues they play in, Montreal being at home, you get it. Uh, but Forge is feeling pretty good. I would say as good as as they felt uh, this entire season. So things really started to click last game for Forge, and they're going to look for that to carry over. Uh, so what are you going to hear in this match day preview? You're going to hear from um, Forge head coach and technical director Bobby Smirniotis. You're also going to hear from captain Kyle Becker, who is approaching that 100 match mark, by the way. Um, I've kind of hinted at it here and there. We haven't gone too deep. I don't want to, you know, put the, uh, the cart ahead of the horse, but... Uh, Becker's really going getting into milestone territory here. He'd be the first player in CPL history uh, to get that many matches under his belt. But we're not there yet, so he's still about six away, uh, six or seven away. So we're going to wait for that. But anyways, Kyle Becker, we'll hear from him. We'll hear from Smyrny Otis. And uh, the fact is that they're in. We get it. Look, they get it. We get. They're in tough. It's going to be a tough match for Forge. Yeah, last year's effort against Montreal still, even though it was a loss, is kind of down in, it's a part of Forge history just because of how close they came to advancing to the final of the Canadian Championship where they would have played Toronto FC. I know they're playing Toronto FC in the 22 Canadian Championship final, but I mean, this, they came within one shot, one save, uh, losing in penalties to Montreal last year in the semifinals of this tournament. And... You know, 0-0, they get into penalties, they lose 8-7. It was, I mean, you're, we're talking so close to uh, moving on to play Toronto FC in the final. Montreal eventually winning the Canadian Championship last season. So, uh, Forge taking on the defending champs. Let's go to head coach of Forge FC, Bobby Smirniotis, and his thoughts going into the match. I think when you look at the, a lot of matches and a lot of uh, the matches that we've played, like Montreal and like other ones we've played in CONCACAF, uh, they make your team uh, stronger. Um, you understand uh, where your players are at, where the level is at. And I think, you know, that's something that's important in, in growing the culture uh, of a club. Obviously, in 2022, we're a different squad. They're a different squad. Uh, but most uh, importantly, like I said, it builds the culture of the squad, all of those uh, matches that you play. And uh, you obviously do very well at the biggest thing you learn is, uh, you know, these are atmospheres that you want. And I don't know what uh, it'll be like uh, tomorrow at uh, Stad Saputo, but I'm sure they'll have their support behind them. But uh, the louder a stadium is, I think the more energy it brings uh, a team. It brings to a home team and it brings, uh, for me, to, to an away team. These are the, uh, the types of environments you want to be playing in. These are the ones you want to be uh, uh, competing in. So what I've told the team in the past is, is to use that as, as positive energy. You know, this is what football is all about. You know, it's not about 22 guys kicking a ball on the field with nobody watching. The more, uh, the more, the merrier. And uh, I hope it's a, it's a very good crowd tomorrow. And I hope it's a loud crowd. And I think that's all uh, positive for, for the game. And it will create a great environment. When you're, you know, considered from the outside as, as underdogs anyway, does how much of, um, you know, in terms of delivering a message to, to your guys and understanding the fact that, you know, you're not going to play scared or play, you know, timid, that you're going to still play your brand of football and still kind of um, keep that attacking part of Forge that everyone's been used to keep that intact, even when you are a perceived underdog, let's say. Yeah, I think that's something we've uh, instilled in this in this club as part of its culture from uh, from day one. Um, we don't change. We don't deviate. Uh, whether it's uh, Cavalry, York, uh, uh, Cruz Azul, or, or Montreal. So there's not much discussion that goes around that. Uh, for us, it's a game plan of, you know, here's uh, the next game up. Um, after, after Halifax, uh, we have Montreal, and, and how do we prepare to go out and play them and instill our principles and make sure we're good on both sides of the ball. And it's the same thing we'll do on, uh, on Friday as we prepare for our next opponent, Edmonton. So there is nothing that really changes. The only thing that changes is where do we have to go to, to be dangerous and where do we have to be careful on where they're going to be dangerous. And that's the only thing that changes week to week. And an interesting little wrinkle to this match as well as uh, David Chouanier 
with Forge FC will be playing against his brother at Montreal. And uh, here's what Coach Bobby had to say about the two brothers going head to head in Montreal. I think David's been excellent uh, this season, and uh, each game brings different uh, tactical approaches and, and and what we need to that. And if uh, both of them are on the field tomorrow, I think it's uh, it's a special moment for the two of them. Uh, and those are the great stories of, of football and uh, I think of sport. Uh, but when you look at the global picture, it's uh, two teams and two different Chouaniers trying to beat each other, um, like they did when they were probably younger in their backyard and playing back home in uh, in Quebec. So I think you know that's a special moment for uh, for the two of them. Uh, but beyond that, it's uh, it's a football match that both of us uh, want to win. Now, if you haven't been following uh, Major League Soccer, Montreal. Uh, there's six wins this season, five losses, uh, started out hot. They've leveled off a little bit, but here's the thing. Um, Montreal scores goals. In fact, they play, there are some similarities in the way Forge play and the way Montreal play in, in the ball possession in that hard work, you know, passing is in soccer. It can sometimes be a stat that maybe isn't indicative of the full picture. Um, but we look, you know, Forge by far leads the Canadian Premier League in passing efficiency and the percentage of completed passes, they're around, um, they're almost at 85%. So, and that, I mean, that's far and away the best. And that tells a story that tells you, it speaks to the skill, especially for a ball possession team. That means not only are they completing a lot of passes, but they're, they're doing it under a lot of pressure. They're making clean passes. They're making quick decisions. They're able to move the ball. Montreal, very similar. They're at 83%. Um, they are fifth in all of Major League Soccer, so also very efficient with the ball. And also, Montreal is in the um, top six, uh, top five, actually, of the league. In winning those one-on-one -on -one battles, those duels in the air, um, whether it's with their head or, or regardless, they're, they're winning a lot of 50-50 battles, especially through the air. They're at 54%. They're one of the better teams in Major League Soccer. When you see that a team is completing 83% of their passes, they're winning those 50-50 battles, that right there tells you you're going to be in for a pretty long night. I mean, you're not going to be able to take any seconds off or you could end up paying. Montreal's a hard-working team, and so is Forge. This is why this matchup is so intriguing with these two clubs going head-to-head -head. and just as a me measuring stick, not just for Forge, but for the Canadian Premier League, I mean, coaches, players don't ever want to put that kind of weight on their on their shoulders. They're they're just focused on the match. But the reality is, you know, from a, a bigger, from the outside looking in, the only time you're going to get, you know, cavalry fans cheering for Forge or Forge fans, you know, cheering for Pacific, and a lot of them still won't. But many will in these competitions because it it's you're representing the league as a whole. And so for Forge going into this match, it's a measuring stick, not just for Forge, but for the Canadian Premier League. And it's exciting to be in matchups like this. These are, these are kind of defining matchups. Um, 24 goals Montreal scored this year. That's the third most in Major League Soccer. Um, 23 of the 24 goals Montreal scored this year have been inside 18 yards. So these aren't screamers. That are that are going in long distance, uh, they're all happening within the box. And again, those are hardworking goals. It, it it means that that's a difficult team to defend. So Forges, they're in for a challenge. They know they are, and um, they they happily accept that challenge. Um, Kyle Becker spoke pre match, and I asked him just whether they can take their matchup against Montreal last season, and apply anything from the match to this one is it a completely different animal this year or uh, can you take some things from last year here's what kyle captain kyle becker had to say no i think there's there's a lot that this group can take obviously we have a, a handful of guys who were a part of that uh that match and and had that experience and i think anytime you get to to go up against um i guess just different competition especially uh uh, ones that we don't face every single every single week in our league, but a bigger competition in games like this, you can pull from from all of those experiences, all the emotions you feel going into it. Um, obviously, there's a different pace, a different level to it, and and we just have to kind of to lean on that experience that we gain from it and and take that into into the performance tomorrow. Yeah, and just to to follow up, um, 
everything you guys have done to this point this season in terms of just preparation, um, you've had some different looks, even tactically this year. Do you feel like the club has finally just kind of found something that you're comfortable with, what works, um, that complements all the the different kind of components in the lineup this season? How do you think you found it? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we've been dealing with a lot of stuff. Obviously, we've had a ton of injuries in our back line, especially. So it's kind of forced us to, to get a little creative and try guys out in different positions, different formations, the way we build up and, and things like that. And, and credit to everyone that we've kind of just keep persevering. We've kept trying and and tried to, to stick to our DNA and trying to play and build up and not going very direct. And and yeah, it's been tough at times. We haven't had that full that full product yet, but there's been stuff that we can kind of keep taking from every performance we've had. There's been so much positivity and and guys have, have kind of kept at it. And, and I think we saw that in that result uh, against Halifax on Friday night. We finally found uh, that extra gear that we've been missing, which has been fantastic. And yeah, it's it's just been a lot of, a lot of that. All right, we are so close to match time. I'm very excited. I'm sure you are too. And a player to keep an eye on for Montreal in the midfield. Georgi Mihalovic has been an absolute monster this year. He's in the early running for MVP talk in Major League Soccer. Um, Mihalovic has seven goals this year. He has... um, that's uh, seven goals in 13 games that he's played this year. 12 of them he started. So seven and 13. So he's scoring at least every other game um, on average. All of his goals have been inside the box. So as a midfielder, again, what does that say? He's gonna He makes great runs. He's in the right spot at the right time. He's just got a great nose for the goal, for where the ball's going to be. His teammates are able to find him. And when he gets inside the box, he's dangerous. He finishes his chances. Um, His conversion rate is over 40%. So nearly half of his attempts are winding up in the back of the goal. So um, he's a tough player to defend against. And the entire, I mean, this is a tough team to defend in general, but he's a guy in uh, Mihalovic that Forge is going to have to kind of keep their head on a swivel for. Um, so this is it where th- this is measuring stick for forge measuring stick for the league forge FC taking on CF Montreal. And the nice thing is forge will get a bit of a break as they don't play again until early next week. Montreal, on the other hand, play this weekend. So we're not sure who we're going to see. We're not sure who sure who's going to play how many minutes, uh, for Montreal, but, um, And, you know, sometimes as a club like Forge, you can take advantage of these chances. If Montreal is going to use this match as a chance to give some guys rest, they have a tough, they have a busy MLS schedule coming up. If that is the case, Forge can't let their foot off the gas, make Montreal pay for their decisions, pay for... I'm not saying Montreal is going to take Forge lightly, uh, lightly because they learned last year that that's not the way to go against Forge. And Forge has proved time and time again they can't be taken lightly, but... Just in case, you know how these matches go midweek. There's always that chance you can catch somebody sleeping. And so Forge is just going to have to put their head down and, and absolutely go to work in Montreal. All right. We're all excited. And it's all coming up. Uh, keep it locked to the Forge Audio Network. We have plenty more content coming to you this week. Even though there isn't a match this weekend, we'll uh, still have some content coming for you with the uh, focus on Forge. So look out for that. I'm Anthony Urcioli. We'll talk to you soon.